Previously I've discussed the topic of multiple regression where we use a number of input variables to predict some outcome. In this case we may be looking at predicting car sales as a result of an economic indicator such as gross national product, unemployment, and interest rate, and also quarter of the year or even the year that um, we are in. However, it would be, while it's appropriate to use an interval or a range of values for these particular variables to predict sales, to use um, this variable, uh, quarter, to predict sales is actually incorrect because rather than calling it, because what it'll, what it'll do when we do the regression is it'll uh, treat these numbers uh, as if four, you know, the number four, quarter four, was four times as big as quarter one. So what we do is we get, when we run the regression, we get these um, estimates of the coefficients, and we use those for creating a model. And so if you think about it, as we go through the cases, this would be four times whatever that value is, and this will be one times whatever the value is for quarter. And that actually doesn't make sense that um, to, to do things that way. And perhaps it's not entirely obvious, but what if I change this instead of quarter, what if I change this to fall, spring, winter, fall? Then this makes more sense. Um, we might be concerned about how does an individual category, such as fall, spring, winter, fall, affect car sales. Uh, and so what we need to do in this case is correct a problem. We're going to assume that one of these categories is the default and it'll get built in to the intercept for the formula, but um, then we will make adjustments if uh, it happens to be a different quarter. So let me show you how I would do that. Um, I'm going to not use uh, this column in my regression directly, but instead um, I'm going to assume that quarter four is the default value, and then we're going to see if things go up and up or down if it's any of the other quarters. So first I need to code this properly, so I'll go equals if this value right here is one, then put one here, otherwise put zero. Uh, sorry, if b11 equals 1, then put 1, otherwise do 0. Um, equals if this equals 2, then put in 1, otherwise put in 0. And equals if this equals 3, put in 1, otherwise 0. So we call this a dummy variable. All right, having done this, we are now ready to go. So I will do uh, data, data analysis, uh, looking for regression. Here's what I'm trying to predict. It has the label in the first row. I want to predict it by all of these things. And let's put my output somewhere on the page. There we go. So uh, what this is telling me is that my adjusted R square is 0.75, so it actually looks pretty good. A lot of um, this value is predicted by these other columns of data. And the F value is really high. It's highly significant. Now let's go down and look at the actual variables that were used. So um, which ones were significant and one, which ones were not. Uh, our intercept value so is significant. Um, and then we have a GNP value which uh, is significant. Unemployment is significant. The interest rate is significant. The quarter, eh, that's kind of not significant because it's above 5, so it's questionable, 0.05. Quarter 2 is significant, and quarter 3 is not significant. So we're pretty sure then that as we go from quarter 4 to quarter 2, that there's an increase in sales of 345. Um, 
So again, we might call this like winter, like spring versus winter or something like that, because these are just categories we're comparing. And we're saying that um, things get better in this quarter compared to the other quarter. Uh, another thing we, I should just point out here is look at the uh, sign on these coefficients. Gross national product is a positive thing. As that goes up, the economy is doing better. So um, for each unit increase in improvement in the economy, we get an improvement, positive improvement by this value in car sales. Uh, as unemployment goes up, we get a corresponding decrease for each unit of employment. It goes up of, of 123 decrease in car sales. That makes sense. And as the cost of buying cars goes up, as the interest rate goes up, the number of cars sold goes down by a factor of 42 for each unit increase in interest rate. And um, as I've done in the past, I could create a formula with this. I can say equal, so I could say like cost equals. Um, 2992.091 plus 0.199 times G, GNP minus 123.928 times unemployment. So I could continue this way plugging in all the numbers that I found right here and then once with this is complete I could potentially um, use that and replace these uh, generic terms like GNP with the actual number for that row and then I could create a column of actual predicted values. Alright, now I'm going to talk about this idea of lagged variables. Uh, so one of the problems we had before was that we didn't consider that one of our variables uh, was actually a category and not a number and so we, we, we handled that by doing this. Um, Here's that this is kind of written out a little bit strangely. Uh, that's because I'm going to use this as my column, or my labels for my regression. And uh, but what I want to talk about here is, if you think about it, if in a given quarter, well, let's just go with this row right here. In quarter two, if the if the the economy is doing good with the gross national product and the unemployment rate is a certain thing and interest is a certain thing uh, that you know these numbers are actually captured after the quarters over so it's kind of happening simultaneously as the sales wouldn't it make sense that if the economy got substantially better at some point or if it got substantially worse because of interest rates or unemployment rates that there might be a, la a delayed effect of those of those things, of those changes, and so to the, the answer is, is yes. I mean, chances are, if people start getting unemployed in large quantities in one quarter of the year, that that'll be reflected in the next quarter's auto sales. And so, in order, so what we can do then is take things from the previous quarter and use that as our input for the current quarter's regression. So we're actually not going to use these at all. That's why I don't have them colored. Uh, we're just going to use this stuff from the previous quarter to do our regression. So it's as simple as that. I've pasted it there. I just need to do a regression now and I will select my sales range. I will select the variables for my uh, regression and I need to pick a place to print these things out and I now have an adjusted R squared that I could read an F value a significance value for that so my model matters it's significant and I can read which of these variables appeared to be significant and as I look through the list all of them were useful we're confident that they're useful in predicting uh, what car sales will be in a given month now it's a, just an artifact of this data set that I'm working with that it looks like my R squared actually got a little bit worse by doing this lagged variable approach so it looks like it's a little bit worse but that might just be an artifact of the the data that I'm playing with I'm not sure if it's real data or not but at least from a intuition perspective it seems like this approach would of lagging the variable by a quarter would probably normally be more accurate than the other approach where you measure it after the fact plus it's more useful doing it this way because um, you might want to be estimating your car sales in the upcoming month and uh, perhaps knowing what last month's um, 
sales are would be helpful in that or actually what what last sorry quarters economic indicators were might be useful for that